Greetings and welcome back to our Bible study on demand. We are so excited to be back with you on this second part of our series of I Am a Church Member. We are so thankful for all of the positive feedback that we have received and we're looking forward to going even deeper into this study. As always, we're so excited to have my friend, our colleague, the Reverend Dr. Richard Allen Washington, our, our scholar in residence. <laughs> and so we're excited about continuing our discussion. You know, last week when we started this conversation, we were really looking at how things have changed in this pandemic for all of us, right? Right. Personally at home, mm -hmm. for us as pastors and church leaders, for our members especially, in their own personal lives, but also in what this now means for church membership. Correct. And that really was the genesis of this whole uh, Bible study that we've started to look at, which yes. is I am a church member, and really uh, posing the question to ourselves of, am I a church member? Yes. And what does that mean for us? Yes. So as we go deeper today, you mm -hmm. know, part one, or I guess last week with the introduction, this is really part one. Okay. Um, before we really delve into the meat of it, I think it's good to set a foundation. Yes. Of what, when we were using these terms and throwing out these uh, different phrases, to really define what is membership, what is church membership, and what does that mean? Where did that come from in the context that we're using it for church member? Mm -hmm. uh, and I think when we were talking, you've already done some research in that, and I think <laughs> that's really good and theological that will help some of our viewers to really understand where this came from and the value of church membership. Sure. Yes. So it's interesting that we have so many different variables when it comes to understanding, as Pastor Cooper said, what church membership is and what it means. I think it's important that we go back to the foundation. If, you, if you're building a house, you want to have the right kind of foundation on it. And so I want us to go all the way back. We are Methodist. And as Methodist, we come from a Methodist family. Now, there are different strands of Methodism, but we are consistently Methodist. And when you consider two things, where the Methodist Church comes from, God, through Christ, moving along in history, we want to look at what the biblical narrative says a little bit about church membership, where it started, how we recognize it. Because in truth, church membership was really uh, in the Old Testament and it was in the New. And what's unique about it is the, the, the church that we know started in Acts, Acts chapter 2, Acts 1, chapter 2. The those, day of Pentecost. Yes, the day of Pentecost <laughs> and how people came together. It's interesting, though, you and I were talking a little bit about how the church started, if you want to look at it from that perspective, with people as one. You know, one of my favorite, I, I keep telling people that the theological genius of Earth, Wind, and Fire and Frankie Beverly and Mays, they are so important to us understanding they, they they were just not making music to make babies to uh, they were making music to bring people together and one of the powerful songs that uh, frankie beverly mays uh, really helped everyone become uh, stronger in is we are one we are one <laughs> yeah and it's so churchy if you will like just think of the lyrics why we treat each other why we treat each other this way. <laughs> can't understand why we treat each other the way we do you know those kinds of of experiences come from people working together in church and in family for that matter uh, we we got to be clear on that foundation so it started out as as one people coming together giving their best watch this for a whole not in part that's first. The, the, the Christian Fellowship Church starts with people coming together, giving the best that they have for a larger purpose. And if you are honest, that's what pastors are working to do. Help people individually come out of themselves and do something for the greater body. Right now, America needs Americans to come out of being a Democrat, a Republican, or an Independent Absolutely. and do what's best for the population as a whole. Presidents need to get over that. And certainly our cousins who are who, who are challenging at times, they also need to come out of doing what's best for them and doing what's best as a whole. It's funny, as you were talking about that, you know, one thing that, that crossed my mind was just the fact that you, you, you do have this sense of everybody coming together, right? Mm -hmm. And our, our nation's motto, e pluribus unum, from many one, right, mm -hmm. that we're all coming together. Right. And we you know we counsel people even in relationships. Right. That one of the challenges of 
any kind of marriage or relationship is that you've got two individuals mm -hmm. who are coming from different backgrounds, different life experiences, and, and we're trying to merge those two to cleave <laughs> together as one. <laughs> that's and funny. that's a challenge with just two people. <laughs> that's and funny. it's the challenge for us as pastors, right? Because you talked about last week how sometimes there are things that we see and experience that y'all don't see. Right. Um, one of the challenges as pastors is that what we're trying to get all of these people from different backgrounds to come together for the common goal and mission of serving and worshiping God, number one. Yes. And supporting and developing each other in the faith. I got something to ask you about. You mentioned how important it is that you are bringing people together in a marriage. You know, maybe that's why marriages are centered in churches because it's a miracle to have two flesh become one. And you need God to do it. Yeah, th right. That's my point. And, and, and the point that I, I, I'm bringing that up for is that sometimes people can get discouraged in church membership. Yes. Because of the fact that, well, I, I don't want to participate in organized religion. I want to participate in the church. I'm, not, I'm mad at that church because of this person or that person, whatever happened. That's going to happen because the, the reality is you're bringing people together. Yes. But we're bringing them together with the idea and the goal of allowing God and God's supernatural power uh -huh. to work through all of us towards that common goal wow. of church membership. Yeah. And, and you mentioned John Wesley because one of the things about Methodism is the fact that um, it is this face-to-face -face thing, right? You, you mm -hmm. mentioned when we were talking just how, m well, any kind of Christianity is, is a, is a um, combined type activity. It's a, it's a fellowship. It's not meant to be done alone. It's not a solo it's, activity. It's social. Right. Social. Christianity is a social religion, and John Wesley really understood that in order for Christianity to grow, people had to interact with one another. I do want to say this to, to persons who are saying, oh, see, we got to be together, and, and, and this pandemic ain't letting us do that. This is not the first time that the church of the living God has been virtual. In the New Testament, if you read correct. Paul is writing letters, people, that he's not there. He's writing to Ephesus. He's writing to, he's saying, I really want to go to these places, but I'm not there. So you're going to have to hear the word of God through this letter. This letter. And so the togetherness, because that's, that's a point that we want to bring out is that we're looking at membership in this, in this pandemic when we're not able to be as physically together as we would like. Mm -hmm. The togetherness that comes from singularness of purpose and yes. togetherness in mind and togetherness in heart and spirit. Yes. Even if I, because Paul says in a lot of his letters, I wish I could be I there with you. I wish I could be with you. But I'm, I'm, circumstances as they are, we got to do what we got to do. Right. right. And that's what we've been having to do. And, and it's interesting because Paul says this, if you really want me there, then you got to raise this offer. <laughs> Y'all got to get me there. <laughs> Paul is very clear. If you want me to come. To, to bring you, to touch you, to, to, to experience life with you, then let me just say it this way. Even back then, Paul is saying that ministry takes money and money helps ministry move forward. You can't, it's just in a marriage, that there are certain elements of life that are going to require uh, you to give sometimes more than you receive. Uh, tell me a uh, <laughs> quick, quick, quick insider. Tell me the story about the, the member you had once that uh, made a comment oh. about, <laughs> uh, about, you know, withdrawals yeah, at, and what have you. At, uh, at my very first church, actually, that's <laughs> what he's referring to. Uh, I had a member, he was our treasurer, our brother Ben Colston, loving to death. Um, he would always make this reference. I didn't appreciate it as much then as I do now. But he would always make the reference that, you know, membership is akin to having uh, a bank account, right? Okay. And that, and it really Christianity, generally speaking, but you got to make deposits, right? And if you have an account where all you do is make withdrawals, then you eventually gonna have an empty account. Uh, you got to put something into it. Yes. And I think that's one of the differences in church membership, as we've talked about looking at the early church, is it's about being able to put something in, mm -hmm. right? It's not about just what can I get out of the church for me, it's about being able to contribute, pull all these different parts together for the benefit of the whole, and the benefit of worshiping and putting God and spreading the word of God to the community. But, but if, if all you're ever looking to get out of it is to get out of it, mm. <laughs> then, then you're, you're really missing the point of it and, and it requires both. Um, now, now, that gets to a couple of things that I, I wanna get to because to, to, 
really want to hammer in this point of what does membership mean and what does membership represent? Because in the book, he talks about the fact that, uh, and we don't necessarily think about it this way, but membership, church membership, really is a privilege. Wow. And we don't typically think about membership that way. Mm -hmm. uh, we typically think about, and I'll be honest, as a pastor, we sometimes we think that people are doing us a favor by becoming members. And sometimes membership will have that, mm -hmm. that mentality that mm -hmm. we're doing a favor so to the that, church. That's a part of culture in that church. But, but when, we, when we understand that, that the church is God's gift to us, mm -hmm. and membership in the church is a gift, then we understand that membership really is about something more, more deep theologically. And, and you actually talked about that when we were in the office, just it's, it's it, the origins of membership are much deeper than just walking down an aisle. Right? So, so check this out. When you talk about the origins of membership, where does it all begin? Of course, we've said Old and New Testament had church memberships, if you will, in it. It's been virtual. Church membership really begins with you not walking down the aisle, per se, but with you dealing with the fact that you are having a new life by accepting that Jesus Christ is your Lord. Church membership begins the moment you embrace the baptism of the Holy Spirit in your life. The word says that when we become believers in that, we become new creatures and old things have passed away. And that's what's so interesting. I, I can't enjoy all of this study on membership until I'm really making it applicable to my life outside of just the corporate church. When you get married, when you have a new family, when new people are coming into your lives, you really become new. And, and it's important to let go of some old ways and some old perspectives and some old habits. And it's certainly important when you come to Christ, you become a new creature. This is why some people get baptized. And baptism is that outward expression of what's really taking place on the inside. Mm -hmm. And that's the key. Church membership begins with our baptism of leaving old ways and old habits and becoming new people. Behold, we are a new creation as we accept Jesus Christ as Lord, which means this, it begins with the baptism. We start this new life and here's the key. You have to know how to live. You, you're, you're a new person. And instead of living for self, as we've said, for the whole, you have to learn how to live for the whole. You, you don't come out of the womb knowing how to mm. live for the whole. Mm. Now, babies, I, 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 we both are experiencing this now. Babies have no problem sharing. They have no problem uh, giving what they have for someone else. They, they are loving, they give, a baby gives everything they have. We teach them how to be selfish. And you teach them that by what you see, what they see. My, I had a fourth grade teacher named Miss Pickett at uh, Edgewood Elementary at the time. And then of course I went to Winton. Uh, at Edgewood Elementary, Miss Pickett used to say, monkey see, monkey do. Monkey do. <laughs> and she was referring to if one person in the class acted like a monkey, then the rest of the class was going to act like monkeys. And often in church, I've said this before, people don't learn how to raise hell on their own. They don't learn how to be cantankerous. They don't learn, you, you, you don't come out knowing you, how to be You got that from somebody. So you've seen <laughs> that. And let me just say, how we operate in relationships, siblings, mm. uh, parental, whatever you saw in your family of origin, that's what you emulate, because you don't know nothing else. Mm -hmm. And it's so important that what people saw that, that might be why God said, no, no, y'all got to be baptized. You, you got to leave mm -hmm. that old life. And, and, and as you come into the new life and, and follow after Jesus Christ with this church membership, you got to be clear. I'm a new person. I'm a new individual. And how does that look? Country club or? So it's, it's funny you mentioned that, right? Because I think when you think about having a new mentality and a new approach, a new mindset as it relates to ministry, it does involve removing some of the old mentality. Mm -hmm. And to your point, right, we use this term membership in so many different areas of yes, our lives. Right? Yes. Some of us are members of fraternities or sororities or other civic organizations, or as he talks about in the book, you know, country club membership versus uh -huh. church membership. Right. And there's a difference. There is a big difference between uh, country club membership or civic organization membership and membership in a church. When you're a member of a country club, you pay a fee. Mm -hmm. or you pay your membership dues, whatever they call them, and you are served, right? Mm -hmm. I, I pay for the privilege of being served. I, I can order somebody around. 
Mm -hmm. They are there for my pleasure. It's about me. And if I don't like something going on, I complain to the management or the board or whatever, because at the end of the day, I'm paying for this for me. The problem is when we apply that mentality to the church, we got issues. Mm. All right? Because whereas that is a membership that is designed around your preferences, or designed around your pleasure, this is a membership designed about all promoting God. Mm -hmm. Church membership is not about you. Mm. Say that again. Which is a paradigm shift. Church membership is not about us as the pastor. No, no. We all have the privilege. That's what I was getting at with privilege. We all have the privilege and the opportunity to be a part of God's church, a part of God's ministry, and to help promote the, 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 the gospel to the, all of the world. It's a privilege. It's an honor. How do we get that privilege? What happened? When, when, when Christ gave us the privilege, mm -hmm. <laughs> that's, when, that's when Christ the, gave us the church. So if that's the case, then we don't own the church. We don't own it, and, and members don't own it. We, this is about us helping to promote God's church. So if we don't own it, the members don't own it, why, why do we, and I'm talking about not just pastors, but mm -hmm. why do people, let me say that, why do people struggle with understanding that it's not mine? And I think that that mentality you're talking about speaks to that. that if, if you have a it's my way or the highway or I'm going to do what's best for what I think is, is the church's responsibility, that that speaks to your particular uh, need, desire to, uh, to to possess something that does not belong, that belong to you. To. We're stewards. Right. And mm. the idea of stewardship goes beyond just money. Yes. Right? We are stewards of St. John. Yes. Allen Temple. Yes. Our members are likewise fellow stewards in that. Yes. Uh, you've heard me say before, you know, we have a rule at Allen Temple that nobody's in charge of anything. Right? <laughs> uh, Pastor Cooper's not in charge. I bear ultimate responsibility. Say that again. I bear ultimate responsibility. Why so? Because as the assigned pastor, I not only answer to the church and the annual conference, but I'm going to ultimately answer to God about what God, what did or did not happen in this church and what God told me we ought to do here. But now that being said, it's not about, you know, power right. or flexing or anything. Right. And when we delegate things to other members, it's about being able to share responsibility. So you've got responsibility over this area or that area. It's not about being in charge. Mm -hmm. It's not about somebody being able to say, look at me, I'm the head, I'm the honcho. That, that, that misses the mark. And yes. if we do it as pastors, we miss the mark. Yes. When, when we do it as members, we miss the mark because it's all about shared responsibility towards the overall mission. Many people coming together. Sameness of mind, sameness of purpose, sameness of thought to help promote the gospel. Interesting, interesting. I, I'm always uh, intrigued by helping persons move beyond personal preferences. And the country club membership you were talking about speaks to how we can be so personally preferenced in everything we do. We, we actually, we talk about this quite a bit, not just us, but uh, other pastors share in this struggle. Uh, in, in the city of Columbus, Georgia, and let me just say this, in the city of Columbus, Georgia, uh, we suffer from um, what I call spiritual incest. We have people going to different places, but they're the same people. It's just flip-flopping. You're talking about we're sharing members, basically. Yes, you know. yes. You just, you just, <laughs> we're not growing the kingdom you, of God. We're just, you just members sharing. going from each other. You, you, five years in this church, 10 years in that church, 13 years in this one. And so where does the kingdom really have an opportunity to increase? And I, and I say that because when we have a country club mindset, it, it churches for me, you know, I, I'm going to go to Allen Temple because I, I, I like the way they give me this. And then I'm going to change over after a little while and go to this church because I like the way they give me that. And, and it becomes this, uh, I call it the Western consumer capitalistic idea that people are just going where they can be, as you say, served. Mm -hmm. and, and to that point about that it's not about being served, but it's about being in service. Mm -hmm. And this is, we get into Bible study, so this is, this is the scripture part. When, when Paul is talking about membership, he uses in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, the analogy of membership as the body, right? The mm -hmm. parts of the body. We're all members of the body of Christ. We're members of a body, like you have membership, I mean uh, parts of your body. And all those things need to function, right? 
And that's really what chapter one of the book is talking about, mm -hmm. being a functioning member. So we've laid the foundation of what membership is. What it is. So we get that right paradigm, understanding that this differs from maybe some membership in other areas of your life. But now this membership has to be functioning. Functioning, yes. And you get not only, you, ironically, you'll get more out of it, right, <laughs> deposits and withdrawals, when you are a functioning member. Right. And um, when, when Paul is laying out, and we're going to read it for you, Joe, maybe you can get it and read it for us. Uh, when Paul is laying out this analogy of membership as the bodies of a, or using the analogy of the parts of a body, what he emphasizes is that all of the parts are necessary. Mm. And so even though we may exist as the head, mm -hmm. right, to your point about consumerism, sometimes we can creep towards this concept that only the pastor ought be doing anything, or the only one mm. who has responsibility for doing is the pastor, and I'll just say it because I know people think it, and I'm just going to say it, because the pastor getting paid, you know. Um, and that's, yeah, that's a misunderstanding yeah, of come what, what happens on there. This but, one. but what we, what we want to help people to understand is uh, if, 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 if you have a body and the only thing that moves is the head and the rest of the body doesn't do anything, that body is stuck in a state of paralysis. Yes. And when you have an organization, a church, where where, where the only thing moving or functioning is the head, it can be nice and comfortable to sit back and say, well, I want this this way and I want to have it that way and I want it. You know, that's nice, but, but the reason the church can't grow and move forward and expand and do things because we need the parts to function, right? Um, and but, so you know, we just got to really understand that this is a part of all of this coming together. It's a great way to introduce it. As you said, Paul, the, the, the history of this is that Paul realized that a particular community who was trying to be a church, that he wasn't able to be there all the time, the virtual community, if you will, was struggling. And as they were struggling, he wanted to help them understand that your struggle is not that you're not doing anything. Your struggle is that you got too many people trying to do the same thing. Mm, mm. And he says, listen, everybody has a part in this. But everybody has a different responsibility. My, my. And that's what we see in, in this pandemic. What this pandemic has really exposed is that one group who's been doing everything. And now that the pandemic has shut down some things, you can see it more clearly. Now, let me share some facts with you. Uh, pastors, every year, 1,500 people once a month who used to serve God through the vocation of pastoral ministry, shepherding, exit that ministry. My, my. 1,500 a month leave. The majority of that 1,500 that leave tap out because they have burned out. My. Now, in the 1950s, there was a shift, family, in understanding this idea of one body and the responsibility and where it lives. People began to become pastor-centered, where they wanted the pastor to be at the church from nine to five, and the pastor had to have office hours, and the pastor should do this, and the pastor should do that. Which is great for our ego. Which is great for the, for the <laughs> church's ego, particularly. You say our ego, because they can say, yeah, our pastor is there at this time, da da da. But it's against biblical principle. Because nowhere in the Bible is Jesus ever staying in the same place and waiting for people to come by. Pastors who leave ministry often say, I'm burnt out, I'm tired, because the weight of trying to meet certain expectations. To be everything to everybody. At the same time. You, you got some, and see the pandemic has exposed this, because we, we have some people that want you to call them. Then you have some people that want you to text them. Then you have some people that want you to email. Then you have some people, and that they're all of... And, and our desire to please, we try to do all try, of it. You try to do all of it. <laughs> and, and, and as you're trying to do all of it, you are run short. And then you have persons who, in the middle of you doing all of it, they'll tell you critically, well, you know you should be doing it this way, or you should be doing it that. And that goes back to what we said last week, which is you, you don't see what we see. And so as people don't see, they, they are they're part of the body, yes. And they admit, I'm a part of the body. I, I, I want to be a part, but I'm not really doing what I'm gifted to do. And I think, you know, we're going to get to being a unifying member on next, next week, mm -hmm. um, which that's 
that's to come. We, we won't talk about that. But I think to the point that you're making is that there's a lot of things that I know personally I would love to do or have at Allen Temple or St. John. Yeah. The challenge is that there's nobody to do it right now. Right. <laughs> um, even before the pandemic, right, right? That was the challenge of just finding people to do it. And, you know, I would love to be able to have this or have that or what you may see at another ministry. Um, but I, I just don't have the capacity to take on another thing right now, right? Mm -hmm. I may not have the capacity to, to add another thing to my to-do list. And I'm sure the same thing is, is true with you. But that's the beauty of membership, mm -hmm. is that there's more of us than there is of me. Yes. As much as I may wish that I was all of that and, and want to toot my own horn, right. we recognize our own limitations. And the beautiful thing is God is so wise is he never told us to do it on your own. We saw that last week yeah. with, with Moses. Moses. You know, there's some people here that can help lift your arms up. And there's some things that the, that the church needs to be able to accomplish. And pastor, it's not about you doing it all on your own. It's about being able to have persons who are more qualified and mm -hmm. there's so many talented folks. Y'all, you watching right now, you are talented and qualified and capable and constant, competent. And we wanna use you. Um, in fact, before I do that, I, I, I want to read the, the text for people so that everybody can hear it and know exactly what it. we're talking about. First Corinthians chapter 12 and starting at verse 12, I'm uh, reading from the New International Version, mm -hmm. which reads, just as a body, though one has many parts, but all of its many parts form one body. So it is with Christ, for we were all baptized by one spirit so as to form one body. I think you just talked about baptism. Mm -hmm. Whether Jews or Gentiles, slave or free, and we were all given the one spirit to drink. Even so, the body is not made up of one part, but of many. Now, if the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body. My, my, my. It would not for that reason stop being part of the body. And if the ear should say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body. It would not for that reason stop being part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, <laughs> where would the sense of hearing be? Mm -hmm. And if the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? But in fact, God has placed the parts in the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. If they were all one part, where would the body be? Mm. As it is, there are many parts, and but one body. body. And that's the whole point of understanding membership. And, and just as those parts of the body are there to support the body, the key is they need to be functioning. Say, say some, you know, Paul's wisdom in giving that, because most people say, where did Paul wake up and just have the image of a body and parts? Mm -hmm. Well, it's easy when you think about it. What other entity actually has to, if it's going to move, if it's going to do, if it's going to be productive, what other being has to have all the parts working, doing different things other than the body. What the, what the, the church has to recognize is- And if one part doesn't work, something's gonna be sick. You, 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 you gonna pass out. out. <laughs> yeah, we, we come to see you in the hospital, right? What, what Paul is genius to do that. And, and, and here's what's so unique. It, this isn't just about family. This isn't just about a, a congregation. In your own family, in the, in the relationships you have with people you love that you say you are connected to and wanting to move forward, there is something you've got to recognize. You can't do what everybody else is doing. And, and as we said earlier, what are you doing to make your family better? Are you, are you participating or are you just consuming? And, and if you aren't doing it here, we know you're not going to do it there. So the church is trying its best to help you become a better family member, to help you become a better child, a better spouse, a better friend. And you, you learn that within the church experience. And to, to your point about, you know, how do, we, how do we do this? How does this play out? How does this come into fruition? How does this manifest it rather? Mm -hmm. And, and that's really the essence of what we're talking about is obviously we recognize in the pandemic we've been, we've, we've been forced to be more virtual. We've been forced to be socially distanced, if you will, and mm -hmm. we've, we've adapted, right? And we're doing the best we can. How do we now function? Right? This was a challenge, yeah. if we're honest, before the pandemic. It really was. Right? It was now, coming. How do this we, was coming. How, how, do we, how do we get, as leaders, how do we get people engaged, connected, involved in the church? 
and, and you had some people who were, but we wanted to get other people involved, kind of off the sidelines, off the bench, if you will, get in the game. We were trying to do that. And then the pandemic happened, right? And now it's okay. Some people that were in the game, that were active and involved are like, hey, this is different. This is weird. This mm -hmm. is uncomfortable. This is, this is unfamiliar. I don't even know how to connect with that. I mean, I, I may get an email or a text or a call or whatever, and that's nice, but how do I, how do I function? How do I engage now? as a member in this, dare I say, disconnected environment. I, mm -hmm. I hate to use that term, that's not really the best term. Well, this, well, this less connected, let's say that, less connected. I think it's important that everyone understands that the pandemic didn't just show up. God was sending messages to the communities of faith and to the culture that change was coming. And that change, if you look at the dynamics, if you don't believe me, you, you look at the dy dynamics of church membership mm. from 1950, when it was at an all time high, 180 million families were a part of a Everybody church connected. <laughs> from the 1950s to the 1970s, it dropped from over 70% to 68% families. So you saw a, a drop from the 70s to the 90s you saw a sporadic, it would be up some decades and then down other decades. What was changing, this, was, this has been coming. What was changing was, was it preaching? No. Was it worship? No. Was it music? No, people want to put it on that. People say the pastors changed. They are different now. They, they are no longer all married. They are now single. You know, the women are preaching, all that kind of stuff. The music changed. You know, we went from wearing robes to wearing this, that. We went from the praise, to, no, went from the choir the to the praise, praise team. team. And then from the praise team to just music, you know. So what, what they're trying to put it off on everything. But you know what really is the cause, What's the cause? of the decline? What we're talking about right now? Disengaged. What has contributed to the decline is that people have not taken their responsibility to the body seriously. Mm. And this is what the pandemic has brought out. The need for people to reassess, am I really a good church member? Am I really connected and doing, functioning at its simplest definition means to participate. Mm. And people have been able to avoid participation or to participate at the least. And that is the core of declining. When you are participating in your organization, you're gonna engage in it. When you are participating in your family experiences, you're going to be a part of it. You're gonna have a vested interest in seeing it succeed. Mm. And what we have now are communities of people who could care less whether the church closes or whether it remains open because they aren't participating. And then, of course, now, look, uh, this, this is so important. Folks say, well, you know, uh, you got to dress a certain way. I, I don't have that kind of clothing. You got to the, the, the whole goal of our, this is Black History Month, right? Our ancestors pushed giving God their best, not just from heart, but from whatever they had. And we can say what we want to about how stuff has changed. That, that desire, that, that, let me say it this way, that standard of cultural excellence has lessened and people have been less engaged. Now mm. there are a few other things that go a, a part of that, such as understanding that people have other opportunities to be leaders in the communities and that kind of thing. But there has been a decline basically because people are not participating, they're not functioning. And so the pandemic gives us a chance to readdress how we function. You know, it's funny, you, you said that the, the, the root or the heart of particip uh, functioning mm -hmm. is participating, it's participating. doing something. That, that's, right? that's it. Getting engaged, getting connected, right? You know? and, and when you're not doing anything, you're gonna feel disengaged. Yes. Right? That when you're not doing anything, it's easy to, to quickly, you know, it, it's, going back to mixing mixing analogies it's like a membership at a country club if i'm not using it i'm gonna cancel it yeah and if i'm not engaged if i'm not a part of what's going on there i'm quick to just be like ah, i don't need that anymore. i don't need it yeah. and, and and part of it is yes i know we got a lot more things going on in the world now we got more demands on our jobs and our families and our communities there's a lot of things pulling us every which way totally and wholly sensitive to that when i was growing up bishop ming 
Your friend. DGK. DGK Meg. DGK Meg. Um, he had in his house, when you walk into the kitchen, there was this sign, and it said on there, we do what we value most. My, my, my. And I never understood it. I finally asked Mother Meg, I said, my, what my. does this mean? And she explained, she said, well, you know, what's something that you enjoy? I said, well, I like playing video games. She said, well, if video games are something that you want to do, you value, you find time to play those video games. Mm. You find time to make a way to do what you want to do. Mm. And now I say it all the time. It's just stuck with me. I say it to my wife. I say, we do what we value most. We do. So don't tell me you don't have time. No, if it's important to you, you find a way to do what you value most. And well, if membership and serving God is important to us, we'll find a way to do it. But some of the attraction is, or, or some of the, 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 the attraction to some ministries, I'll put it this way, is uh, I don't want to have to do anything. So stay right there. That saying and, and how you make it live in your family life, remember, this ain't just corporate family. When you make that live, it's really what Jesus says. Where your heart is, mm. there your treasure will be also. And treasure ain't just money. <laughs> treasure. If you don't spend any time participating, functioning with church experiences, if the only time you connect with the church family is once a week on a virtual outlet, if you're not praying when the church has opportunities to pray, if you're not engaging in watching Bible study on demand or any other, if there is absolutely nothing that you're doing to participate, to, to function, like you said, that membership gonna be canceled and it's going to later on go evaporate. We have to work, as you said, at making God priority, making the community of faith a priority in your life. Now you just made me think of something because I, I can hear it through the airways, I can hear it through the air. It, it, before somebody takes that and runs the whole, well, you know, my membership getting canceled, it's not me canceling it, all right? <laughs> um, it, to me, it's kind of like a gym membership. Uh -huh. I can go sign up for the membership, pay 30 bucks a month, whatever it is. And, and, and if I don't go to the gym, mm -hmm. if I don't make it a priority to go and get, they got the stuff there. If you don't participate. We're providing it for you. Yeah, if you don't participate. You can't get mad at the gym because, because you, you didn't lose weight. Yeah, say that, say that. You can't get mad at the gym because, uh, uh, because you choose not to engage in what you said you wanted when you became a member. Yeah, yeah. And so, so where the value comes is that yes, the, 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 the church has a responsibility to provide opportunities to engage, but there's also a responsibility on the other side See, to engage. That's, that's, that's the part that we are missing, and, and I know we gotta go. The part that people are missing is that to function means that you are doing your part. You are responsible for making your home spiritually more effective, more, more productive. Uh, it's interesting that the only time folk will reach out to you is what? When somebody's dead? Maybe. When somebody <laughs> <laughs> is sick? Maybe. When, when, when something traumatic has happened in their life. Uh, I saw a post the other week on Facebook that said, uh, if you wonder why your pastor has not checked on you, you ought to check on your pastor. My, my. Because it goes both ways. Mo, whew, you didn't say something. But that's, that's that <laughs> consumerism. I, I want to be served. I want everybody to come to me. And I'll be honest, when, when people have that kind of mindset, that's why they ain't got nobody at home. <laughs> because if it's always about you, child, who going no, no, let, let us be honest. If all you're doing is receiving. Withdrawing. Withdrawing. As a church member, nobody wants to. No, no. So I, there's a question that um, that uh, my family and I shared. How have I made today easier for you? Wow, wow. Say that one more time. I think we all need to apply that to our lives, yeah. our relationships. When we, when we are when we are concluding the day, the question to to the family. That's an accountability check. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? The question is, how have I made this day easier for you? And you gotta, you gotta hear what the 
individual says. And be ready for the response. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> because that's accountability, that's responsibility. So I need, I need, you know what, maybe that's the way we can end today. How, how have we made our churches better today? How, did we pray? <laughs> I, I think that's perfect. Because the question on how, how, do, I, how do I function now, mm -hmm. it may require some creativity, some out of the box thinking. And I think one of the ways is how can I make my church better? Yes. How can I make things easier for us to be able to, 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 to accomplish the mission of expanding the gospel? And it could be something as simple as, hey, Pastor, I, I realize we need, I don't know, a, we a need Sunday school, and I, I'm going to own it. I'm not going to ask you to do it. I'm not going to put it on your to-do list. I just want to get permission to, 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 to do the Zoom, and I'm going to own it. I'm going to teach it. I'm going to do it every week. I may ask you to put the, the word out. But I'm going to own this, and I'm going to help make the church better because of that. Yeah. Or, or maybe, I, um, you know, I don't, I don't know, maybe, maybe I'm going to help dress the altar during the week when nobody else is here, and I'm gonna, that's going to be my thing, and I'm going to do that to help make church better. And I, I might not be comfortable coming to church on Sunday yet, but I can do it during the week when nobody else is there. Mm -hmm. I'm comfortable with that, but that's my way of doing mm -hmm. it. It may require you coming up with some things and being creative to find what works for you but for you to be able to apply the question, how can I make this thing better? How? And pray on it. How? And, it and, and maybe I have to do it in a different way, just like we're doing everything differently. Yeah. We understand that. But what can work for me or you to be able to say, you know what? I want my membership to mean something. Yeah. I want my membership to be functional. I don't want to just have a gym membership that's taking 30 bucks out of my account every week, every month, and I'm going, man, I ain't even used that. And thing. I'm overweight. Because <laughs> um, I'm, I'm speaking from experience. <laughs> um, don't judge me. Y'all did the same thing. Don't, don't, don't even go there. But how can I, and in your personal life, how can I, what have I done mm -hmm. this week, this month, this year? Today. Today to make my family better, to make life easier on my spouse, to make my church better. Mm -hmm. Uh, we appreciate we appreciate the financial support. T trust me, we appreciate. We need this. And you we mentioned ministry we, needs money, and we need it. But but I also need you, yeah, because you matter and you contribute that much more to what makes this place a success. And that place is St. John and Allen Temple. Yeah, yeah. We really desire for God. To, there's so much God has given us to share with you: vision, hope, mission. We need you to ask the question, how am I making my church better? Well, we realize that we have gone way over time way today. Over. Uh, however, hopefully it was good for you. And as I said Sunday, if it was great, please tell everybody you know. If it wasn't, tell us first. Uh, <laughs> we, we hope that you are getting something out of this. We hope that this is meaningful to you. This is an opportunity for all of us to grow. So this is not, please don't take it. Receive this hopefully in the manner and in the light and in the spirit in which it's intended. Love. That we might be able, and love, that we might be able to grow together and the vision that God would have for us as a body of believers coming together. And as you ask your, yourself the question, am I a church member? And we get to the answer of yes. Ask that, that question that Pastor Dr. Washington has posed to us. What have I done? What can I do? to make life better for my family, for my church, for my community. What have I done? Look in the mirror first, and I declare you'll see there where you can start to function. As always, we appreciate you joining with us. If you have questions or comments or concerns, please, you can call us, you can text us, you can email us. You have our information. If you don't, you can email pastor at allentemplecolumbus.org. Uh, and that will be the, the Allen Temple email. I believe you have the St. John email as well, if you know it offhand. Well, uh, if you have a question or want to engage, want to be participating more, you can send an email to rawfordmovement at gmail.com. And uh, we can go to work right there. There's also the St. John email. We want to hear from you. Please, please, ma'am, please, sir, tell us what you think. If it's helping you, if you have questions, feel free to reach out. But as always, we want you to know that we love you, Jesus loves you, and there's nothing you can do about it. <laughs>